days like this, I guess, don't come around very often. It's a normal day working with a, with a surf after work, come home, check my emails like I normally do, and there it was. This email for an invitation to go to a remote fly fishing location, and not only is it unique in its location and its diversity, but I'm getting the opportunity to fish with Peter Morse. And I have a bit of a philosophy that I don't get out of bed unless I want to learn something. Um, and that's certainly true with my fishing. So to be able to stand shoulder to shoulder with Peter and learn all about maybe my technique, the species spotting fish, maybe the location itself, work with one another and really nut this place out. I'm, you know, it's so exciting for me. I'm, my blood's just pumping. You know, I found out about this trip. I'm trying to research it. Not a lot's known about it. So you don't know what to tie. You don't know what to take. So pretty much been tying like mad, trying to to cover everything, you know, from shrimps to clouses to, to GT flies, flats flies, blue water flies. Um, it's all got to be there. It's all got to be in the box. And I think that really adds to this sort of sort of a trip, you know, these sort of diverse locations. It gives you the opportunity to do so many different things in a week's fishing that that week fishing trip actually ends up being about three or four weeks with the preparation and the anticipation of it all. So you know, I've watched Peter Morse from a from a young guy and when I first started to fly fish. So to be next to him, that's a dream come true. The trip's a dream come true and I can't wait. I love travelling to places like this uh, for the remoteness, the wilderness, the large numbers of relatively untouched fish, although, you know, that doesn't mean they're going to be stupid. And uh, I guess you're far, far away from communication from, from the rest of the world. I mean, the Great Barrier Reef out here is a, it's an absolute wilderness. We're in a wilderness and, you know, who doesn't like going to wilderness places? especially if you're a fly fisherman. The other thing I really, really like about this place is the prospect of catching completely new species, or new species for me, and in some cases, completely new species for fly fishermen generally. Chad, how are you, mate? Good to see you. Likewise. Yeah, good to see you again. Good to see you again. For me personally, fly fishing has a very special place in my life and in my heart. I just love it. I love what it brings. I love it where it takes me. It takes me to so many unique places around the world and in Australia, especially Australia. I love fishing within it. Such a wonderful country and 
so many species and the diversity here is amazing and that's what I really love, you know, you never know what you're going to catch. And I really love that, I don't care whether they're this big or, you know, or they're, or they're trophy fish, you know, that's what I really love about it. I've, I really enjoy preparing for a trip, researching, tying those flies and the anticipation of the whole thing, you know, from the time when I sign up to the time when I, when I get on board a boat or I step onto a flat. That's what I really enjoy and obviously being out there and, and being in nature and being with around, surrounded by the ocean, surrounded by fish, surrounded by birds, I have seen some wonderful things and that's part of it. That's what I really enjoy and that's what I'm really looking forward to you know, for the rest of my life. It's not just about catching fish for me. It's about all those other things that I see. It's all those other things that I catch. It's all those other people that I meet. And it's all those other things that I experience, be it food, be it fishing location, be it culture, whatever it is. You know, fly fishing has so much to offer for me as a person. going to be better, the tide's going to be a little slower, the blue sky, just beautiful. Yep. Hang on, i got to stick one out a little bit. <laughs> Here we are, big GTs, big GT.
Yeah, Claremont Isle, sort of northern inner Great Barrier Reef area, north of Princess Charlotte Bay and south of Lockhart River, or the area known as Portland Roads, in an area that's inaccessible to uh, small boat fishermen, I suppose. There's a few islands out there, massive flats, lots of reefs, and, uh, but its remoteness makes it really untouched. I guess the other attraction of the Claremont Isles region is that it's between the outer reef and the mainland. Uh, the outer reef is about 20 miles out and the mainland's about seven miles away and on the mainland there are creeks and rivers, then you've got inshore mangrove islands, you've got the sand caves and the big reef flats and then the outer reef uh, 20 miles away and you can cover all of this, I mean the boats on the mothership we're on can cover this in a different day. Different boats can go to different areas. So we can scatter far and wide and come back at the end of the day and someone's been up the creek catching barramundi and someone can have been out on the, the outer reef edge catching dog tooth tuna. It really is an extraordinary place. My introduction to it was when I worked as a guide in Weeper and flew often between Weeper and Cairns and the plane used to come north up the coast and then turn at Princess Charlotte Bay and head west to Weeper. And I remember many times looking out across Princess Charlotte Bay at all the rivers and then out across the ocean and seeing these immense, immense areas of sand flats and thinking back then, this was in the 90s, God, I'd like to fish there one day. And I remember talking to Damon about it quite a few years ago. We were talking about the possibility of bonefish in this part of the world and I I told Damon about the flats I'd seen off, off uh, Princess Charlotte Bay, and I guess at the time he'd probably already marked him on a chart as somewhere to explore, but that was long before he'd come up into this part of the world. I mostly fish with younger guys. I, I like the energy that they bring to fly fishing. And uh, I've sort of hit my 60th year this year. And young guys, if you start to flag a little, can drag you along with them and, uh, you know, keep the, keep the energy levels up. I haven't fished with Brett before. Uh, he's a lot of fun to fish with. Great guy and obviously a very, very keen fly fisherman. Uh, I, I met him years ago in Tasmania and gave him a fly casting lesson back then. He's come a long way with his fly casting. Uh, he's caught a lot of fish on fly. I know he's absolutely passionate about permit. He's uh, caught them in Mexico. And I know he's very, very keen to nail one of these local Great Barrier Reef permit. Uh, track you notice, Block Eye. A very, very pretty fish. And uh, I know he would love to add that to his species list. They're a very deeply addictive fish. Well, within every angler's head and heart, I guess there's a special fish, one that they, they hold quite close. And deer, and for me, you know, it used to be the barramundi. I love barra, but that was until I met Mr. Permit. I guess Permit for me, um, they really hold that place because of, of where they live, how hard they are to catch, how hard they fight, what they look like. The places that you catch them, I really enjoy that shallow water flats fishing as well. So for me, they really have taken number one spot.
very special fish, extremely pretty. You know, you get the ones in the coral sea and on the eastern seaboard of Australia there, and western seaboard as well. They're smaller, you know, they're beautiful silver and yellow and, and long black sickles. The smaller ones have got small mouths, extremely hard to catch. The places they live on the flats, I love that style of fishing. I could just do it all day. And I guess that that's why permit hold that place for me. I mean, they, I know they hold that place in a lot of the anglers' hearts, but especially for me, they really do. I, I really enjoy it. And I'm gonna get that third species one day. And, you know, it's great to have those goals. You know, at first they were a dream fish. Now I've got the two. You know, there's no stopping me getting number three, that's for sure. Really fascinating and challenging things about fly fishing in Australia is the range of species that we do get. I mean, in other parts of the world, they're perhaps dealing with uh, two or three species. Out here, we could encounter almost anything on the flats, uh, from queenfish, a multitude of different trevally species, permit, blue bastards, and other fish as well, through the emperor species. And being able to identify them, uh, because they all require some subtle differences in presentation and fly, being able to identify them before you actually make a presentation, that's the challenge. Know what you're throwing at before you actually throw. Like a trevally is going to want a fast retrieve. A permit is probably going to want the fly sitting on the bottom with a couple of short strips. A blue bastard is definitely going to want the fly just sitting there with a couple of short strips as it approaches, and then you've got to read its reaction. So knowing what the species is before you actually throw your fly at it is a big help. I've fished many places around the world and all around Australia and I think that one of the things about the Coral Sea is its immense diversity. There are so many opportunities here whether you be a sports fisherman or you're a fly angler. So not only are they really hard pulling, hard fighting, brutal beast up here, there are also some very, very tricky fish that are very high on the list of many fly anglers all around the world. So it's really exciting to hopefully, hopefully get the opportunity to target a few of those things. So for me, achieving those little species along the way and experiencing new things like fly fishing the outer reef, I've never done that. Hitting things like GTs and really hard pulling fish, I've never done that either. So all that's, you know, it's all brand new to me, that open blue water fly fishing. I've fished, you know, tarp and permit bonefish. So hopefully what I've learnt there, I can bring a little bit of that here and I have a little bit of that sight fishing knowledge. But some of the other stuff around the reefs, well, that's what I'm really looking forward to getting into as well. Seeing what I can catch every cast, you never know what's going to happen. You're going to get blown away or you're going to get that fish of a lifetime. That's one of the beauties of the Coral Sea region. <laughs>